Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. You realize what you're up against, don't you? Evil. This is episode 151, recorded October 25th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is a podcast about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host, Jeff Moore, Chad, Chad, man, Bill Mulligan, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this wonderful, groovy, gory, influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm extremely puzzled because Chad's name is only Chad. It's only it's Chad. Yeah. I throw, throw a curveball in there every There's now and then. Chad. Yeah. <laughs> There's no Chad, Chad of the dead. No. Chad of the dead. Oh my there God. almost was. I forgot. almost forgot to change it. That is Chatty awesome. baby. <laughs> I'm that good. Awesome. I'm good. I also joined this week, this, this week, tonight, and every day. It's Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and all around nice guy. Thank How you doing? Uh, I'm fine. This is uh, this was a this was a movie. It was a movie indeed, and it was selected by our next co-host joining us tonight is Chad Hunt. He's comic artist and co-host of every single decades of horror podcast that we do. All of How them. are you doing? I'm a little doed out. <laughs> are you really? <rare>? Yeah. <laughs> and go ahead and announce the film you chose for this. The 1977. Classic Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Yes. Oh, yes. Those words should have gotten caught in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, stop. Uh, well, it was definitely a film that we were going to have to cover at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, it just happens to drop on HBO Max this month. So, what better time than now? Oh. Uh, so, that's what we've done. Excuse me. I have a grasshopper in my throat. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Piece of styrofoam. <laughs> let's get it. Let's look, come in his throat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Pazuzu. <laughs> I got a little Pazuzu in my All right. Let's um, move along here and let's talk about the film. All right. We are doing Exorcist 2, The Heretic from 1977, directed by Don, John Borman. What is wrong with me tonight? And uh, uncredited, Rospo Pallenberg. That's a story in and of itself. Written by uh, William Goddard and William, or uh, based on characters created by William Peter Blatty. The cast includes Linda Blair, Louise Fletcher, Richard Burton, and Kitty Wynn. It was released um, <laughs> basically in May of 19, what? No, filming dates, excuse me, between May and November of 1976, released June 17, 1977. The budget was $14 million, and it made uh, roughly 30 So I don't know if they count that as... No, it made a profit. Made it a, make a matter profit. Of, yeah, yeah matter of fact, it, um, one of our things was it, it was the only Exorcist sequel to make a profit. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> the Poison the water for all the yeah, others, but yeah. yeah. The teenage girl, once possessed by a demon, finds that it still lurks within her. Meanwhile, a priest investigates the death of the girl's exorcist. Yeah. Did you, did you see that? The story. Richard, they, Richard Burton was about to swallow a, a brown painted piece of styrofoam. Yeah. 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 Uh, that would give him an excuse <laughs> to wash it down with some beverage, I'm sure. Wow. Well, it would melt it. Because it's alcohol. Mm. But all right, let's get into this. We need to find out when did we first see this film and what did we think of it? Chad, so you are first. Um, Spill it. I think I, I rented this whenever it came out, first came out on uh, VHS, actually. And um, hmm, I didn't know what to think of it then. And I saw it again a day or so ago. And Still don't know what to think of it. <laughs> I, I, um, I think when I first saw it, the I was a little confused by it. And um, what was such an intimate, scary story in the first Exorcist movie. And it was, and, well, it was a movie of a lot of people. It is a scary, one of the scariest movies ever made. But it was also a movie of 
redemption and, and of, a, of a man who had to find his faith again. And um, which was a really, really compelling story. This one, they tried to open it up and make this epic um, story out of it. And to me, it didn't, it just wasn't the exorcist. You know, um, and it was always a mystery to me how um, such a, a great cast, it, I had such a great cast, but they weren't really given anything to work with in this. And uh, it had some moments, it had some moments in it, and I, we'll talk about them, I guess. But upon the first time I, I saw it, I was really dumbfounded by where they took all these uh, aspects of the first movie, uh, the demon Pazuzu and, and the boy that they talked about that father Marin helped, you know, uh, ended up being James Earl Jones wearing a Cayman Rider helmet. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it was just, it was a weird, weird film. And it was almost like they were on, purpose not giving the audience what they were looking for in a in mm. a uh, in a in an exorcist movie and um <laughs> like an so, exorcism uh, right uh anything that was far the farthest thing from an exorcism I, i've ever seen but um it's like they just tried to open it up too much you know um and i didn't i just didn't dig dig it i just didn't didn't dig it i did not neither dig it. neither time Neither time. No, not All at all. All right, time. Bill Mulligan, sir, you're up next. When did you first see this, and what's your first impression? I first saw this film in its entirety yesterday. I have <laughs> attempted to watch it several times. Now, I'll admit, I'll state out front, I went in with a bad attitude. I mean, this was the movie that came in <laughs> second place in the 50 Worst Films of All Time book, which was like my Bible growing up. The only thing that beat it was Plan 9 from Outer Space, a far better film. Oh wow! Oh yes, oh, it has wow. a story. It has Plan Nine has a story. Uh, this this thing is, and it's it's so. The other thing is, it's just so infuriating because it has such potential. This is a bad film made by a good director with terrible acting by excellent actors. You just you know, there's no reason for it to be as bad as it is, except that they there was no reason to make the sequel. I'll give them one bit of credit. I mean. Finding there are nuggets of gold in this film, but it's like panning for gold in a in a latrine. Uh, you know, it's no, not worth no, the effort. No, yeah, no, um, no. there's the, the story, the idea of that good versus evil in this film, and that you know, evil is actually seeking out good. Um, I can see where he he liked that idea. I think it completely subverts the first film which was, you know, that the, the devil just randomly attacked this poor girl. That girl could be any of us. She's she's an innocent, and it becomes this uh, battle between good and evil. But now we find out, and this is such a cliche, she's one of the chosen ones. Yeah. She's a healer. Um, yeah, she's a healer, and, and that's why she was picked. It wasn't random. She's just like, she's like Anakin Skywalker. I mean, no, it's 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 a bad idea. It's badly done. Weird choices. Weird set design dark photography darker than it really needed to be and just strange choices like i, I you know the, the only thing that makes any sense to me reading about the history of this film is that the director got very very sick in the middle of it and i can believe that because i see things in there that i would not expect to see from john borman who's done two of my favorite films of all time Deliverance and Excalibur, and made Zardoz, which is a total mess, but a glorious, entertaining mess, as opposed to this mess. You see things like strange transitions that just seem amateur, scenes that just sort of fade out, and okay. Um, there's a cheapness to some of it. That that Scientology biofeedback machine looks like something I literally would slap together in a weekend with hot glue if a friend of mine called me up and says, I need some bullshit machine. Like, okay, here's some lights and glue it on a box. What? None of it makes any sense. I I, I hate this film. I really <laughs> do. I really hate this strongly, film. Strongly, strongly hate this film. Oh, wow. I, 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 what, I guess what I'm saying here is I hate this film. I don't know if I don't know if I'm <laughs> we I'm got that. Try, I'm not, not going to beat around the bush anymore. 
Yeah. And we made you watch it after all these years. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm grateful for that because otherwise I'd just be saying I hate this film without any real, you know, I'd just be talking out my butt because everybody hates this film for the most part. Yeah. And I would now now, now I can say know. I am informed in my hatred for this film. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, sir, you're up next. When did you first see this and what was your first impression? I just saw this in the last week as well. Um, I didn't rush out to see it when it came out. And the immediate negativity surrounding the film did not lead me to seek it out later. In fact, I just, oh, there's that one again. I don't need to watch that. Uh, so anyway, here we are watching it. And uh, I, I really felt sorry for the leads in this and because apparently they were kind of i mean the people that came back like uh <clears throat> linda uh linda blair and uh kitty Wynn were were sort of coerced you know by money and apparently I don't know. And, a, and a script they didn't use and yeah. a script they didn't use suckers and the yeah. history of this thing all the different versions of the script and all the different versions of the movies and the i think it's been read at least twice um they i, I don't think they had a, they had a clear vision um it doesn't really to call it the exorcist 2 is a little weird it would have been better just calling it the heretic um and not worried about having you know they tied it in with linda blair but i don't know I didn't like it. There's it no money in that. Boring. The whole, yeah, that's true. No money. That, the, the whole science fiction synchronic psychological thing, whatever the hell that was, what a load of crap. That was the stupidest mm. premise and the stupidest effects. And I, I don't know. It, it just was, this didn't make any sense at all mm. to me. Um, so I didn't like it. I'm sorry. You still ordered <laughs> the Blu-ray. I like you. No, I don't. I do not. I was <laughs> you'll, you'll, for those for for those who want to. There is a Scream Factory Blu-ray available, but I did not do that. Um, um, I'm sure there's people out there that <laughs> buy it up and love it. Uh, well, and there are there are some people that that like this, and it was sort of funny. I, there was a whole list of uh, you know of. of uh, responses or reports or reviews mm -hmm. or however on on this thing most of them of the nature of bill said you know it was in the worst film ever made i think it, it was called that by the razzies maybe and and then mm -hmm. uh, i actually think plan nine from outer space is a i would never put that in a the worst movie ever made thing i just wouldn't no. it's too much fun i it's uh, incompetent worst, but that doesn't make it yeah worse. yeah yeah the worst i don't know i i Anyway, an and, I, it. <laughs> and I don't know if I would put this in that either, you know, because I, I've seen some really bad movies, probably, yeah. you know, $14 million movies. I don't know. Um, Which was a huge budget I, at the time. This is one of the most expensive movies Warner Brothers had ever made. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And Louise I Fletcher, see. I didn't think she... She was terrible. Her, uh, yeah, but... Uh, in fairness, so that character has no has nothing what what we don't know anything about her other than she has some kids and she's she, there's she nothing there the machine and and yeah apparently so anyway yeah uh and and we'll talk about this later but there's so much conflicting stuff like the guy at Rospo Pallenberg that you talked about hmm. you know John Borman says you know there was two different pieces of information the show was held up for five weeks while John Borman was sick. And then another piece that says Rospo Pallenberg shot scenes while John Borman was sick, which is not mm. production being held up if someone else is shooting the scene. Mm. So maybe it was held up for five weeks and then Rospo Pallenberg shot some of the scenes. I don't know. It's just odd. And Linda Blair tap dancing. That, that poor girl. Yeah. I can't believe he made her do that. <laughs> See, I assumed when I saw that that she must have really loved tap dancing and insisted that she get a chance to show her tap dancing talents. And then you read that no, she couldn't do it worth a lick. And he thought for some reason that would be cool and made her do it. And and then some of the I, I saw some of the critics. Boy, critics were way meaner back in the day. 
like they, the the New York Times, you think would know better, or like you know, Linda Blair has pudgy knees and can't tap dance. Like, damn, what what are you body shaming this seventeen year old girl here? You know, it was it wasn't great tap dancing, but oh, come on, she's she's cute in this film. It, it's one of the few. That's one of the little nuggets there. She's kind of cute and and deserved a better movie. Deserved a better movie, indeed. Uh. Yeah, I I tried. To, I mean, I remember watching this movie and sometime I, pro I don't know if I watched it on like a cable, you know, like HBO or something like that, or if I did what Chad did and and rented it. But I do remember trying to consume this movie in the early '80s somehow, and it was it was it was hard, and I was like. You know, I was confused as hell. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? And it left a very bad um, taste in my mouth because it, it it's it's really it's the opposite of what The Exorcist is, and it's the opposite of what audiences wanted. Um, I think the director finally admitted to that later on, mm. and he realized that he yeah you know, he was trying to you know spice it up, change it up, and. Um, it kind of went kind of went too far <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah. thought about what you know what the movie was really about so yeah the, so to have that name on it, it it's just wrong um but at the same time there are elements of it that are fascinating and and but not enough to make it so yeah so i watched it again this past week for the first time in decades right what mm -hmm. three four decades mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I, it's not as bad as i remember it being um you know distance has improved it a little bit because you know we've gotten other sequels and we know you know some of those were a mess as well and so we know that that you know it's a hard subject to even approach in that way you know three did a great a pretty good job of it but the other ones TV show did a good job, so we'll see what this this reboot does. Oh Lord, what a, what a task! Somebody's got a lot ahead of them on that. But yeah, I uh, yeah. So my impression is not very good, much like everybody else. I think the acting's a little well. No, it's really not. I was gonna say the acting's a little better than you guys are giving credit for, but it mm. really isn't. Um, it well, Louis Louis Fletcher was originally cast as. Um, uh, I the, mother. the mother, Chris because, McNeil, yeah. Chris, yeah, Ellen Burstyn, right? Because she's hmm. basically a lookalike, right? Yeah, or, or look very similar looking. And then um, they made Jean Tuscan a female and put her in that role, and they bumped up to Kitty Wynn to be the role of what was written as the mother. So that, you know, that's so. It, sometimes you can see that you can feel that character yeah. is not mm -hmm. quite right. Um, and yeah, it's really weird. And I don't know what. So at some point, we've got to talk about the ending. What the? What? Yeah. Where did they walk off into? Where? <laughs> you know what the hell's going on? The next, the lot next door. The lot next yeah. door, <laughs> which was not there anymore. So I don't know. I, this movie. Oh gosh. Um, I mean that end, that ending was so bad that the director just cut it out of the film when, when they scrambled to try to fix after the movie had been released and was bombing, he just went in, trimmed that ending off. So it just, it ends presumably Burton is dead and she's just standing there swinging her little rock and blank. It's Oh really? Yeah. 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 That yeah. It made it no less baffling, but yeah, that's not the a lot more I sudden. Saw. And the thing I saw is yeah, this uh, apparently they weird, restored it. You know, the weird conversation in the street and then, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, will, they walk off into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, something. And then everybody comes and says, "Oh my God, what happened? What happened?" When they should have been there like a half hour ago. You yeah. know, well, I, I, I think they were implying something there. I, I gave them a, a bit of a pass. I mean, why not? Because it was too late. Um, all right, so posters. Um, you know, the poster does a good job at selling the film. I mean, that's what you know. She's the face of. Uh, the Exorcist a lot, so yeah, it's there. it doesn't promise a lot, and that's good because it doesn't deliver. Um, we're, we're I guess you know people would remember that that's I know when we think of when we think of The Exorcist though we think of the possessed little girl, not how she looked. But I you know it was okay, it's all right. Well, she mm -hmm. is 
supposed to be older, so you know, there's an right. Imply, there's an implication here, but it also suffers from the little heads in the box. Yeah, yeah I never did like that. <laughs> but that's very seventies. Now this one heads in the box. I this like this one. one a bit more actually although yeah, this one but, this one promises something that it doesn't really deliver yeah this one looks more like repossessed you know that uh, <laughs> yeah you know yeah that, it does the, yeah the comedy thing or, or mothman was, ah, wasn't she what? in that too because i mean yeah she when, was in repossessed yeah because yeah, when she's made up toward the end of this movie she mm -hmm. looks like she's directly out of that movie it's really really kind of weird um I, i'm not a yeah. fan of just that but I get it because she didn't want to be put up, you know, put in that makeup again, and that and that makes. You didn't sense have too. Dick Smith doing it either. Well, he got credit. Did he? Uh, he got, uh, he, got he got credit, but I, I, you know, I'd have to look into this. I and get probably for the, de the design. For the design, well, I didn't or think maybe the, just for the uh, showing the flashbacks from the original. I, I didn't. I didn't think that Father Marin looked as good as he did no. when Dick Smith aged him, mm -hmm. and I thought the demon makeup. Partly because it wasn't actually on her; it was on someone else. Looked oh, really toned down. So I don't know how much Dick Smith was involved. He did get a big credit, so but it, it whatever for whatever reason, it sure didn't impress the way it did in the first one. Which uh, is I wonder, I wonder if he only I wonder if he only did um, Cosimo at you know when he was a young kid because mm. that looked that looked good, yeah. better, yeah, right? Because that was right. Kind of scary. Um, mm. uh, let's talk about the director first. We've kind of mentioned him a bit. Uh, director john borman john borman uh who is like you said a great director although you you once told me that zardoz was his other bad film which is ironically the film he directed after he passed up directing the exorcist so yeah kinda... yeah i you know this guy he, deliverance in a, is an amazing film excalibur is nuts but great yeah, and Zardoz uh, is just so crazy and so ambitious and and not so and everything. I mean, but and he did some other stuff too, may, you know, more standard kind of things. He's a gr he's a really good director when he's good. I mm, I just do not get any Borman vibes from this film at all. Yeah, and and you feel like it's because of. Uh... Maybe the illness, or he just his heart really wasn't into it. I mean, he says he did not want to make an Exorcist film. He he wanted something else. And when when it failed, his big thing was, you know, like the audience is uh, like an arena, and I didn't throw enough Christians to it. I think he still believed to the end that if he had just put in more gore and pea soup vomit and everything else, and I think people who people like him who didn't like the Exorcist, he didn't like the initial film see it just as this shock film this gore fest and sacrilege and all you know all kinds of they remember that stuff and they don't remember just the, the craftsmanship of that film yeah the the scene just the scene of the car coming up and father Marin coming out the one that was used in the poster that's an amazing shot that's an amazing scene the film is full of beautiful shots along with the ugliness there is a lot of ugliness in it but there's a lot of beauty too and this this doesn't have any of that um i don't know i don't know what went wrong yeah, john Borman is still with us he's oh good good yeah he's 89 years old yeah the, one of the things that i really really didn't like about it is the characterization of father Marin as a heretic and he's got for some something they never touched on in the first film all these crazy ideas of of uh, these chosen healers and and it was you know Father mm -hmm. Marin was it just totally to me uh, subverted that whole character uh, and uh, I that's that's one of the big sticking points that I had with it is is um, the whole themes of good versus evil and 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 loss of faith and and redemption and and that kind of Thing. They were they were talked about in this film, but they were not demonstrated at all. Um, and I hated that. And I hated the, how they characterized uh, Father Marin in it. And and it just didn't seem fair to that character how they ended up doing him yeah. in, this, in this in this film. I was puzzled by that storyline because you know they're saying he's a heretic, and so Burton has to go investigate this. But then when Burton starts investigating it, they don't want him to investigate it anymore, and nothing th th those ideas don't seem really heretical and then the whole thing kind of gets dropped yeah I, I, 
Well, as far as there, and then he he takes up the mantle and then goes off with Locust Land. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the wings of a locust. Uh, <laughs> did they even mention Father Karras? Because he's never pictured. He's I. I and it's I don't of, remember them yeah. saying anything about him. No, that really kind of takes me. Yeah, that's yeah, a little about, strange. Because he's he was a big driving force in the film. Well, See, honestly. Was, no, I, 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 I always thought that in The Exorcist that really Karis was the target all along. I mean, that was my theory is that the demon went after this little girl as a way of bringing the priest into it because, you know, wanted one more shot at Marin and really wanted to take out Karis to, to have him, uh, you know, this this guy having a crisis of faith. That's For a demon, that's got to be the ultimate victory is to take out a priest, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to bring a priest to the other side. And his... His arc at the end, when you know he embraces everything and, and saves the girl by inviting the demon into him, and then killing himself to to stop the demon from this whatever he would do once he had a priest in his possession. Huh? Um, that was a great great story. Every character, every even the minor characters in that movie had purpose. Uh, what is what is Louise Fletcher's purpose in this film? What is she there for except to show us this dopey machine? Um, She's she seems like she's going to be the antagonist to the priest, you know, the the skeptic, but doesn't really go anywhere with that. Yeah. Um, he has the. I don't know. Boy, I, I just. It don't is. Know. It is. It is poorly. Yeah. yeah. Poorly written. It's not a very. There's nothing to draw you in. You don't really understand the stakes. It feels like a movie that was being written while they were filming it, which is what they say happened. And sometimes movies like that, the movie turns out okay. And you're like, wow, okay, well. Mm -hmm. But this one is exactly, it turns out, the way I would expect a movie that's being written on the fly. Mm -hmm. That it doesn't hold, yeah, a big sloppy mess that doesn't hold together well. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Richard Burton. But, <laughs> but uh, here's, a, here's a good, I, I was trying to find a few thing, other things he did in the genre. He didn't do very much genre stuff, and the stuff he did, like Bluebeard, was generally awful. Great actor, one of our greatest actors. Yeah. But boy, was he in some garbage when he needed money. I don't think he said no to anything. He said yes to films that John Carradine would be like, whoa, don't take that one. <laughs> but like the Medusa touch, pretty wretched. The Klansman, god awful. But, but his voice, his voice, uh, you know, his, his narration in War of the Worlds is so good. And, uh, you know, those eyes are fantastic. In the beginning, I thought I was going along with this film. But at a certain point, I just failed. And I think so did he. You can almost see it. There's points where he looks like he's reading off cue cards. Mm -hmm. Because he is, literally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, you, you just you look at the scene, you think, is that the best take you had? Because it seems to me like he paused at the wrong time while he tried to find his place back on the cue card. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of those those moments yeah. in here. And, of course, there was, you know, that scene where he's just sitting there. They keep yeah, cutting to him too. Like they keep yeah. cutting to close-ups of his face, but nothing ever changes. I know it's weird. What's up with that? Yeah, Jeff. Jeff, what's up with that? <laughs> Jeff doesn't. And Jeff got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> None of us. Do. Nobody I, knows. I'm not yeah. gonna say it's too easy to say some guy was was drunk or whatever. We're going yeah. off of a lot of stuff that Linda Blair said uh, in interviews and things, but yeah. uh, he definitely wasn't. Uh, his heart wasn't in it. I no. Mean. Yeah, it's it's a weak performance. It's a it's a, a a cash grab, which a lot of sequels, you know. Yeah, and, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's and first... because okay. of the success of Omen, they probably rushed it eh. because yeah. they didn't really have a good script yet. Nobody, you know. I think they said uh, Friedkin and uh, Blatty had worked on trying to come up with a sequel, and they couldn't come up with something that everybody was happy with. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always said though when a good actor, when a great actor like a Lawrence Olivier or a Richard Burton is, you know, those those alimony checks aren't going to sign themselves. So and, and his was to, you know, Elizabeth Taylor. So dang, and they were going zero. through a divorce. They were going right. Through divorce, yeah. So you take what you're given, but oof, you know, when when a, when a great actor is bad, they're bad on a level that regular actors or even bad actors could, could only dream of attaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they've set a standard for themselves yeah. in other films. And then when they do something like this, that's totally uh, just trash. And, it's and, and confusing. If another, yeah. yeah. 
if another actor was trying to put out a fire with a, a crutch, I would probably just like, okay. But when I'm seeing him doing it, like, wow, he's really giving it his all. That is not how you put out a fire. Nope. I, I, no fire in the history of fires has ever been put out with a crutch. You're just fanning the flames, literally fanning the flames. Yep. Well, this didn't change that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really weak performance. And then he would, yeah, yeah Medusa Touch doesn't do him any favors either. Yeah. Oh, well. The best, the best um, criticism I ever, the best critic I ever heard talk about, well, I think it might have been for the Klansman. I forget who the critic was, but he said, I can't say for sure that Richard Burton was drunk when he did this movie, but I can only hope and pray that he was drunk when he did this movie. <laughs> like, yeah. Who knows? All right. Linda. Linda Blair. Linda Blair. A lot to talk about here. Like, like you said, she, you know, both her, <laughs> they just didn't want to come back. Right. Bernstein and her didn't yeah. want to come back. Right. And I mispronounced the name, but they didn't want to come back, but they, yeah. uh, they, did coerce her. They used, like you said, cash, and they used a script that they ended up not using. Um, and they promised that she wasn't going to have to be in the makeup. So probably all the she's checking off a list of all the reasons that I don't want to do this film. And they, you know, they said, okay, okay, okay. And here's a lot of money. And you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, you I, know, she's one of the things I liked in this because I thought she really does look like the little girl from The Exorcist, grown up as she should. <laughs> and she's got a she's got a real likable normal quality to her, which they then subvert by making her a magical healer who can make autistic kids talk for the first time. And, and that was a, that was a con I did not understand her performance in that scene, where the the little mm -hmm. autistic girl you know asks what you know what happened to you, and she goes, "I was possessed by a demon." <laughs> I did not understand that. Why? Why are you so happy about that? You yeah. Know, uh, I thought she I, didn't remember any of that. It's just, it was an odd choice. I thought for them to let her go with, because I'm did sure. You, did you recognize the young girl? I did, but I don't know who she. she Tell was. me, because she looked familiar, but I didn't. Dana Plato. What? Oh yeah. Okay. That's, oh, that's so sad. Different strokes. Oh gosh, yes, you're right. That oh, that makes that's sense. so sad. It, it well, yeah, because you know how things. Didn't go well. Um, hmm. Gee. What and, about you, Jeff? Is, is Linda Blair an asset here, or is she part of the problem? Hmm. Hmm. I, 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 just, I, just, really feel, I just think the whole script was just so lame. It was hard for anybody. Hmm. To, I mean, she said after the fact she had a hard time telling what the hell was going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, she I, certainly gave the whole... wasn't alone, yeah. The whole head electrical headband thing, it, you know, the, the whatnot. I, I totally believe that that's what she was doing, even though it was horseshit, right? Right, so, right. I mean, so I, I you know, I, I don't, I don't think she's a, a negative. It, it kind of starts, doesn't it? Kind of start the way the original was, is it with these sort of cheery home scenes? You know, like everything yeah. is yeah. wonderful yeah. to make you feel like. And this time it doesn't doesn't play quite as well for some reason. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, and they, there are other shots of her on the, uh, the top of the skyscraper, which is harrowing. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. That skyscraper was terrifying. My wife's watching this and she's like, oh my God, there's like big gaps in the yeah. wall that you oh, have there. No. Who would have that? Who would do that? Especially if you have a kid in the house. I know. Yeah. yeah. And that, when they filmed it, they knew there was no way that if she fell, there was, there was nothing else. There was, that was it. See, you know, those, those stories. Those stories seem a lot more amusing when we don't we didn't just have a tragedy where right. you know someone got shot on a set and just right. think, you know these these stories about the dangerous things on sets and everything, you know I, I hope everyone I, I hope we look at that with a different attitude now because there's no reason for that there's no right. reason to put people's lives in danger for any movie especially a piece of shit like this but I, I can't believe. If they would because she really looked terrified, and I guess she was she was not acting. She really was, you know, the line between falling off a building and not falling off a building is is a thin one. One breeze away. Yeah, yeah um, it's a damn movie. Use angles or build a set. You had sixteen million dollars or whatever. Don't put the, put this kid's life in any risk whatsoever. I, maybe the risk was small, but if it was bigger than zero, that was completely irresponsible on their parts. Mm -hmm. It is a gorgeous shot, though. 
It is a great shot. It's, it's one of those little nuggets that you see in there. Weird, weird place to live. Oh, for oh, set design. Okay, I kind of get, yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff with mirrors and reflections. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's some good artsy stuff in there. That psychology room, that place for the children, was that designed to traumatize kids yes. to, for the rest of their life? It's like, okay, uh, you're autistic. We're going to put you in a glass cage where everyone can see you, and you can see all the other kids with their problems around here, and it's like some kind of alien zoo. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, good plan. It's a strange, that, strange place. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I, was I'm, awful. I, I hate to belabor this, but as soon as they went to the headbands, I was – that's I was gone. They, so they, she they, they, were, they were gonna have to they were gonna have to do something pretty phenomenal now, to get me back. I'll, but, I'll be fair in this way. I thought that I thought that machine was ludicrous. The headbands were stupid and cheap looking. The the sound effect with the, the light and everything, I thought that was pretty well done. Mm -hmm. Uh I thought I think the sound in this mm -hmm. film and the soundtrack are definitely among the better better aspects of it. Uh, Morricone is a great artist. Uh, yes. Some of the music, some of the music in this, I love to play that one, which used to be what they played over the credits, but wasn't in this version. That really cool jazzy, -na 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 -na. la la la, whatever. It's great. I can't remember the actual name of the tune. They keep is that, saying is that it's the one that Tarantino used. Yes, um, maybe it should have right. should have been. I can see Tarantino loving this film. He says he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's a genius, and uh, but. Uh, uh, Scorsese likes it too. Scorsese likes the Catholicism of it. I'll bet. Uh, you're, uh, you know what? I think you might be right. Yeah, <laughs> and and yes, there is that element that the good versus evil, and the fact that e that real good, like Kakumu and Reagan, would attract evil. That evil is is like a moth to the flame. Uh, you know that good existing in the world is something that evil can't tolerate. So it seeks mm -hmm. to corrupt and destroy it. Cool. That's a cool concept. And I can see where that story would, that premise would attract them. The problem is they didn't come up with a story for that cool premise. Right. They did not. No. Well, well I think you got to hand it to Linda Blair though. And Richard Burton is they both refuse to do the full fledged rape. Oh, the, uh, thank God. Demonic possession scene. I mean, they, oh. The way they do it is even kind of clumsy and awkward. You know, they, he, he sort of awkwardly yeah. lunges at her. But, if, but then obviously nothing is happening and he breaks away, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of awkward. Uh, Jeff, to be fair about your assessment of the, the film, uh, you know, early on with the, you know, this contraption, audiences at the time did the same thing. In fact, in the early screenings, the very early screenings, they threw stuff at the screen <laughs> and walked out and chased. I think they even chased some of the <laughs> the the, the uh, cast and crew down yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it was it was yeah it was panned, um, mm. panned terribly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's listed in that stuff. Top ten best bad films ever made. Uh, the Golden Turkey Awards, uh, yeah. I think you mentioned, um, Pauline Kale liked it. Um, <laughs> of course she, of course she did. Pauline she, Kale. She I, hated I The Exorcist because of the graphic, you know, the man. I think, I think this, yeah, I think this movie was attractive to people who really hated The Exorcist. So, yeah, but who cares? Scorsese likes it. Does great goodness bring upon itself great evil? Uh, that that part's kind of an interesting concept, but it's so yeah. foreign to what the original uh, Exorcist was. So that's yeah. hard to... yeah, yeah, it was a big swing and a, a huge miss. Uh, okay, so let's talk about <laughs> James <laughs> Earl Jones. Kokomo, 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 The unfortunately. <laughs> the locust shots of it flying around are ridiculous, but probably fine for the time. I think we. I, yeah, I like the top shot. I like the big giant locust at the camera. They kind of went to the well a few times too many, but that was a creepy, eerie thing. Mm -hmm. um, and locusts are nasty and scary when they're actual locusts. I don't know why James Earl Jones is wearing a locust head, and then he just turns out to be a, a scientist who works with locusts. Which, yeah, he he goes from that to being a 
sort of a nerdy scientist character. Yeah, a nerdy the scientist explaining this yeah. this hoo ha about, it. and this female locust, the, the her wings can get brushed, and she's like, "I'm like, what is going on?" I but work uh, in yeah. science, and none of this made any sense. <laughs> Don't brush the wings. Don't. Don't brush. Yeah. Looking at that middle uh, picture again, I, I, looking at it a little closer now, it doesn't look like a Dick Smith. It doesn't. No, it does. I, I don't know. It just doesn't look. It, like it, a Dick it could Smith, be. So. It, it's it's not terribly well photographed. I mean, this again, uh, maybe it was just the print I watched, though. I watched it on a, a real streaming service. I thought it all looked kind of dark, kind of dark, kind of muddy. Mm -hmm. And 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 again, things things struck me. I'm just like, this is amateur night when when we get to see Ned Beatty. Who's, whose role is, I don't even know why it's there. He's a cameo. He's a cameo. Yeah, a total cameo. But at least, couldn't they have shot a couple shots of his face? I mean, we most of that scene is him yeah. talking. We see the back of his head. He's dead beady. He probably cost some money. Show his face. Um, it's like, did they bur did they accidentally burn the the over-the-shoulder shots from the other side? It, they might I, have. You never know. <laughs> and 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 that whole scene could have been lost, and there would have been no detriment to the film. No, nope, no. Nope. So you know, it's just it's just Richard Burton going back and forth to different places. Oh, that guy falling through the crevice. That was the weirdest fall I've ever seen in my life. Wasn't I, it though? I, I, do they not understand the concept of gravity? How things work? I mean, what what a weird. And then, and then, and why, comes, did, why didn't they lift everybody up in that chair? Like, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And and what this guy shows up the first time he's been there, he just saw this in a vision, and he finds the skeleton that apparently no one ever thought to look in the crevice around, where around the guy the fell. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you know what? He would have bounced off that rock and ended what ten feet away from where you looked. But We've looked everywhere. We cannot looked, find the body. Yes, the it's body been thirty there. years. Oh, okay. It's behind the dumpster over there. And then for no reason they start they start throwing rocks at him. I, I, I understood that part. I'd throw rocks too. I was ready to throw rocks at my TV, but would do no good. All right. Well, there's more to talk about. Um uh, okay, so the middle shot that we have there is a yeah. really weird scene where they superimpose the exorcism from the first film or a retelling of it over top of uh Linda Blair and um, Fletcher, uh, Fletcher, and it's you know a, it's supposed to represent grabbing the heart, and it's really yeah. it's awkward. It's a priest watching two girls grope Louise Fletcher. In a weird way, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, he looks on disapproving. Burton's <laughs> like, I could do better. Than that. <laughs> step aside, step aside. <laughs> Let me show you how they're. He doesn't know how um, to grope an actress. <laughs> and Louise Fletcher is acting in a way that makes it look more like she's enjoying it, not having her heart palpitated by a demon so I it was weird that whole the it whole thing weird. with the with the light machine thing was just it takes you right out of the movie yeah i mean they were trying to do some foreshadowing right because mm -hmm. it comes back up at the yeah, end. it does it, that heart movie. thing does come back up but you know the whole ludicrous so richard burton has never seen this as have all none of us have seen this stupid machine before but as soon as things go wrong he just jumps in slaps it on his head and knows what to do. Yep, mm -hmm. goes right in. Well, that's why he hired him. He was like, <laughs> and, <laughs> he oh, and then, and then, oh, okay. So this is another. I wrote this down. Why the last thing he does is you will not remember any of this. Wasn't the whole problem he's trying to convince her that that the demon was real? And here was his chance. She's being groped by a demon. And he's like, and you will forget about this. Uh, okay. Why reasons? Anything? Uh, Hey, gotta make didn't, it a whole lot harder. Reagan say tell, tell yeah, make, I, her, make her forget about it. Don't let her remember it or something like that. Why? So why why what was the reason? Yeah, what's the and then of course the whole Yeah. Yeah. You know. The bull roar. Is that and what I, call those yeah, and I, man, that I remember when I watched it back in the day, it just I just didn't understand what they were going for. <laughs> I, I do. I, I still I understand, don't. A, I understand a little bit more now yeah. you know, with the whole idea that you know she's. Yeah, I I do like that actually. The 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 thing. I mean, the idea that across all these cultures, you know, it's not just it's not just Christianity fighting this evil. This is a thing that has existed even before Christianity. So, other cultures have their own symbols, like the cross or the, you know, rock on a rope or something. You know, things these totems that we use to to battle against these ancient evils. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. 
I mean, really, there's a there's a lot of good stories that could have been told if they if they wanted to go in a different direction. But look, it's The Exorcist too. So at some point, there's got to be a damn exorcism. I mean, the audience deserves that. Well, they, you know, they, and they try to do it at the end. Did with, they? But no, they didn't. They didn't succeed. Oh. But they oh. they go back to the room, which okay, fine. I don't think that was necessary, but I guess. Yeah. Sure. It was just a callback to the first movie. It yeah. wasn't, I mean, that was sort of a pandering type of thing, if you ask right. me. It just something to satisfy fans of the first movie, but it had, it was so bad. It was so bad. And, and as a, for an exorcism, we get, what, five seconds of Richard Burton dry humping evil Reagan and then looking properly embarrassed for himself, as was I for him. Mm. Um, but yeah, when, when I read this thing about what they intended, what they planned on that scene being kudos to Burton and uh, Linda Blair for sticking to their guns and saying, uh, -uh no, that's, yeah. that was an appalling idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they were thinking. Just, and they, but he does eventually. You know, pulls out her heart. That's fine. Yeah, she's yeah. a demon, but you know, just, yeah. <laughs> well, meanwhile, the house is ripping apart. And, sure. But, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> Louise Fletcher and Kitty Wynn are driving in a car and the smash through the thing. And so what, well, why? Pazuzu is just jumping from body to body, to body, body to body. So, so did, okay, am I understanding right? That Pazuzu possessed Kitty Wynn and made her set herself on fire. Or did she do that to kill the demon that was in her or what? Someone throw me a freaking bone. Well, I, I don't understand any of it. I, to me, it felt like a little bit of like they, they borrowed a little from the omen, you know, and she was, she ended up becoming all for you, Damien. Yeah, it's all for you, Damien, right? <laughs> and I don't know. I to me it was I, I don't think she was possessed. I think she was just what was her goal in setting I don't herself know, on fire? But it, I don't I know. No it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's hard to keep her from interfering, maybe. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe. Save her, maybe save her life. I don't know. And then you have the uh, the actual ending after that and I'm still confused. So did Reagan die? No, evil Reagan died, and then evil good, Reagan died. Yes, and then good Reagan did the you know twirly stone dance and the, the locust. And... Yeah, did the tap. Oh, that would have been funny if she was tap dancing while she did it. It would have all made sense. Uh, and the locust disappeared, and then she and the priest go riding off into the sunset to. But they walk back through the. Yeah, they walk back through all the all the debris. I don't get. It. Yeah, oh, from I, where I was sitting, I thought they were like walked across the street or something like that. But they walked back into the debris of the of the town hall or the house. Are we frozen? Uh oh, yeah, I'm, I can I can hear Chad, but Doc and Jeff look like they're just stunned by the genius of what. Bill and Chad are saying it's like oh, I'm I'm shocked by their their. Please, Chad, Bill, criticism. keep going. You're, keep going. Yes, you're both oh. geniuses. Oh yeah. Uh oh, and now there's a robotic voice. Oh, now oh, Doc's no. back. Now. I'm back. Were you guys talking? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Fine. <laughs> uh, Pazuzu does not want us to continue talking about this movie. Uh, all right, so I am going to thank you, everyone, Pazuzu. Everyone, have one last chance to rip on something of this movie. Oh, there is boy. there. Okay, so I'm looking through our notes, which are literally. I, there's probably I probably have books over here in my library that are shorter than this. <laughs> 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 I I could not make it through all this because one, it is kind of dull. Um, but every once in a while, there's something interesting in here. Somebody, what do you guys want to say about this at all? I mean, other than like John Voigt was going to play Father Lamont at one point, but good for him for bailing. I'll say this. Um, Stanley Kubrick was asked to direct it. That would have been. That would have been an interesting method. Yeah. And it would have been a completely different film because I think he would have thrown this script out. Or maybe it would have, he would have taken gone... place on the moon. Right. He did it. Um, it, but it certainly would have been visually interesting. And Kubrick said, Kubrick told Borman, the only way to succeed on this is to outdo all the shock effects that the first one had. And that may be true, and that's a good reason not to make the movie. 
because I think that's exactly why I hated it. I mean, it tried to, it, it was just so over the top and, and I, they tried to expand on the first movie, but the way they did it with all this, tra you know, traveling everywhere and, and it just didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. Mm. And, um, and he, <laughs> yeah. If he tried to uh, over, over or outdo the first one, he didn't. He failed miserably. Because uh, um, um, the first one had some stuff in it that was just shockingly right. The, ur the urination scene when she urinated in front of the whole party there. Nobody'd seen anything like that before. Um, I'm yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. right. All kinds. Yeah. Of yeah. Well, Dr. Tuscan, as we mentioned earlier, was originally going to be a male. Could you see one of the many people that they were after to get that is Gene Wilder. Could you imagine Gene Wilder in this oh, movie? Oh, gosh. No, no one I mean, no. Great actor, no. but not in this yeah, movie. Yeah, no. not, he wouldn't, no. not in this. Or Richard Dreyfuss or Chris okay. Sarandon or George Siegel or Alan Arkin. They were just like after anybody, right? Yeah. And Some, they wanted, somewhere, somewhere Christopher Walken was mentioned too. But. Oh, I mm. bet he was. And um, when they decide to make it a woman, then they were going for Jane Fonda and Anne Margaret. They were just like, "Wow, we got to do what the Omen did and grab names." I, that's mm. literally what it sounds like. It sounds like, yeah. Well, but they no, had they uh, had good names, and they still yeah. it, it still hey, look, sucks. Louise Flesher is a terrific actress. Yeah, I mean she's she's done great stuff. She's she's really good. It's not her fault that she's so bad in this movie. I don't know that anyone could make the dialogue and this nondescript character interesting i don't know why she's there and yeah yeah well, that's one of the things when i started watching it i said louise fletcher's in here this is might elevate this a little bit and she did nothing hmm. she did nothing and it was just so heartbreaking for me because I, I really like her uh, and um it was so sad to see that it really she really you can't you can't anywhere. polish a turd there was nothing yeah. for her to there's nothing for her to do mm -hmm. You know, you can only you can only recite the dialogue they give you, and if that dialogue doesn't advance the story in any way or make it, make the character interesting, why is it there? Why are you there? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she's Nurse Ratchet. Yeah, she, she was awesome in that. I know. And this was her next role, Ooh. and then and then she was in the Cheap Detective, so that was a step up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. She was in Grizzly too, the revenge there, Bill. Well, you know, listen, you gotta take the roles that you're offered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we didn't mention Max von Sydow much. Sidow, 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 Sit down. Um, I, I, if you would have drilled me, I would have said this was not. You know, the, the scenes in Africa, yes, but the scenes where he's facing off. The, the possessed Reagan mm. from the original, it didn't look like him. It looked like a yeah. double. That's why I think, I don't think that was a Dick Smith creation. I think I'm pretty, I'm thinking maybe he got the credit for yeah. the design designs of the makeup from the last film, but uh, they just, you know, each makeup artist, well, Bill, I know Bill knows this, but each makeup artist sort of has his own style where almost mm -hmm. where you can tell yeah. from the work who did, who did the work. And, um, I just didn't get any Dick Smith from any. Nobody, of nobody could do aging like Dick Smith. Right. Still to this day. Yeah. I mean, um, see, I was in his forties, I think, when they did the Exorcist. Yeah, or... which was so puzzling. I, I feel like, and I, I should know this, but I feel like they probably intended for there to be flashbacks in the first movie because otherwise, it makes no sense to cast a forty-year-old as a seventy-year-old and force the makeup man to do this incredible makeup. I just hire a seventy-year-old actor. There's lots of them. So well, referred to, yeah, they referred to him and the exercising the boy um, earlier yeah. on. So maybe time wise, that makes yeah. sense to do. But but, uh, but, to, it, but to give you an idea of how great Dick Smith was when Max Van Sano, when he finally got that to that age, he looked pretty much the way Dick Smith yeah. thought he would. Yeah, he did. It was amazing, so, actually. Yeah. That's great. It was actually quite amazing. Well, I, just to name a quote here, and then I'm going to defend the person named uh, William Friedkin is actually quoted as saying, I was at Technicolor and a guy said, we just finished a print of Exorcist 2. Do you want to have a look at it? 
So I looked at about a half an hour of it. I thought it was as bad as seeing a traffic accident in the street. It was horrible. It's just a stupid mess made by a dumb guy, John oh. Borman by name, somebody who should be nameless, but in this case should be named. Scurrilous, <laughs> a horrible picture. <laughs> I think oh, that is sense. very unfair to traffic accidents because in fair people will go out of their way <laughs> to go watch a traffic accident, but they left this film in droves. So, so in, in defense of John Borman, we mentioned a lot of his movies, but one of his earliest films was Point Blank in 1967, which is a great neo-noir mm -hmm. with Lee Marvin, Carol O'Connor, Angie Dickinson, and Sid Haig plays oh. a... Uh, penthouse security guard that that gets some uh get some time get some action sequences so uh check that one out if you haven't seen it that's pretty good yeah no he's a good director he's a great director um but this was a mistake yeah it was, it was. all right well, he had an go. idea and nobody nobody wanted yeah it. or somebody had the idea I don't know. Mm. hey all right this is all right let's wrap this up this is getting painful. No, this is so much fun. <laughs> this is getting painful. Uh, final thoughts. God, did you do a score? You guys want to do a oh. score? No, uh, I'll give no, you mine already. Do yeah, just don't do the score. Uh, anyway, uh, just wrap it up. All right, just wrap it up. Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. You're up first. Um, no. No. Hmm. If you're a fan of The First Exorcist, this movie totally subverts the whole first movie if you don't mind that i guess go ahead and be my guest but i would not recommend this to anybody i just can't in good conscience so right. no <laughs> raspberries no yeah. yeah no you know usually i'll say well this isn't a this isn't a good film but if you're a horror fan it's probably something you should watch i mean i'm not telling you don't watch it hey you might like it I see no reason to go out of your way to watch this. Uh, the entertainment value is, is slim. It's bad, but not in that entertaining way that you can have fun with it. It's it's. There was a point where I looked at the you know clock and there was like forty minutes left, and I just about fell out of my chair because it felt like I've been watching this for a long it time. It is two hours. It's a two hour. Yeah. Uh, so no, not good. Um, missed opportunity. Maybe maybe one of the classic examples of Hollywood having all the pieces but not having the one thing that they really needed, which was a reason to make the movie. And without that reason, there's no passion. And without the passion, it's just two hours. It's two hours. Oh my yeah. God, that's exactly what it is. Jeff Morrison. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think he had, a, you know, they somebody wanted to make, seem like a good idea. It should be able to make money. We'll, put, we'll throw uh, uh, a good director and a bunch of good actors at it. And they could just never settle down on the script you know it just seemed like it was all mm. over the place and the idea that he wanted was not the audience's expectations so he was kind of doomed from the start yeah you know it's mm -hmm. um kind of like you know what like a godzilla movie with no godzilla in it you know yeah. <laughs> uh, well, more godzilla so, in your godzilla movie that's for sure uh right yeah. right so anyway <laughs> i i i kind of it was just misconceived you know, yeah. Can, yeah. How about how about this? If you need to watch it, if you need to watch an Exorcist sequel, watch Exorcist three. It's not yeah. great, but it has a story and one really good scare. Yeah, it has one but, of the best do, scares. You, yeah, yeah it's one of the best. Yeah. Scares. And and you do get the uh, carrot Lee J. Cobb's character comes back as mm. played by uh, yeah Patton. Patton. Um, oh, George C. Scott. George C. Scott. Yeah. So, which is actually a perfect kind of. Yeah. yeah, make up that role. Yeah. yeah, So uh, he, I, he, I, he disappeared I, oh, from this movie. Yeah, yeah they sorry. Use him. Uh, I, I have the same thing as the, you guys. Uh, this movie is just, I, I mean, I okay. So it was interesting to watch it in this respect, in you know, in this kind of environment, to watch it as just because you actually want some entertainment yeah. <laughs> instead of you know, have a discussion about it. Woof. I, I don't know how you would get through it. It, um, it really does fail to understand what the concept of, you know, sequels. And, you know, Halloween th 3 for all, you know, even though it's really good and people love it now, you know, it kind of fell into that same 
you know, misstep, mm -hmm. except for yeah. it was competently made with a good script and good actors and eventually found its audience. This one mm -hmm. is just, it's, it's just bad. I, I, you guys, we've been kind of pooping on the, some of the actors, but I really don't think the actors are to blame here. Even no. Burton, even Burton, no, he I just, agree. they just, they yeah. weren't given anything to really work right. with. And right. the story just is hogwash and horseshit. So stick with the TV series. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, oh, the TV series is actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, TV yeah. series was great. Yeah. Let me, okay. So I think if you look, the script was bad. And there's two ways you can deal with a bad script. You can just basically deal with what you're given, and that's what Louise Fletcher did. And her performance just seems middling and boring. Or you can just take it and do what Burton did, which is swing for the rafters and you know over ham it up and everything. Neither one is going to rescue a bad script, mm -hmm. but it's not. Neither one is really the actor's fault because these are pretty much the only options you have. Unless you're allowed to rewrite it, mm -hmm. you're stuck with these words, and the words weren't interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. They were not compelling. All right. we uh, Jeff, sir, do we have feedback for this episode? We do. Yay. Piece of feedback for episode 149, Cat and Nine Tales. Ah. And this is from Mona Lisa. We've heard from her before. On, I like her smile. Uh, yeah. And on I think on uh, she did a review on iTunes, and her name was Mona Lisa Smile. I think it's the same person. I don't know for certain. Anyway, Mona Lisa says... I started out as a fan of Gruesome Magazine classic version, but added 1970s and 80s to feed my fix. Love everyone's different take on the films. Please tell me that one day you will review the film that had me looking in my closet and under the bed every night as a little girl. Don't mm. be afraid of the dark. 1973. The, the TV movie? Tim Darby? Yes. Yeah, so Tim oh, Darby yeah. and Jim Hutton. I, I, and I then, honestly, I'm surprised we haven't. Hmm. Uh, me too. Well, I, I'm looking. I was looking for it. I can't find a decent. It's on YouTube. Yeah. I can find pay pay for pay per view versions, but I can't find a streaming hmm. with a subscription service or with. So um, we should do definitely, it. Definitely, we definitely want to. And I didn't realize that the movie uh, that came out about ten years ago was a remake with Katie Holmes yeah. and Guy Pearce. Yeah. Was the a Guillermo bit of a remake Toro, with yeah. with yeah Del Toro oh, had and uh, yeah. script work on it. So. That's a definite, that's a definite. Put that on the short we, list, right? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And thank you, Mona Lisa. For thank you very in. much. Yep. Thank you. you. All right. We love feedback. We do. Yeah. Please give us some feedback. There's all the information in the show notes. Uh, next episode, we know what it is, right? You want me just to spill it uh, since it's my that. pick? It's my this pick. Is a this is a step up, a big step up in my opinion. <laughs> well, as you guys know, I am a huge Also fan. a sequel. It's, a, it's very much so, and also one that <laughs> took a long time to find an audience, <laughs> to be fair. Sequel, 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 um, sequel. It's, uh, you know I love Hammer, you know I love Peter, Peter Cushion and Chris Rulli. Uh Let's go for 1972 and do Dracula AD 1972. Let, if yes. we're going to go bad, let's go all the way, because this is... It's this, still better than Heretic. I, I oh, this is a good, <laughs> good movie. Yeah. This is a, this is there's a lot to love in this film, but there is there's a lot to kind of giggle at too. Um, it, I, it oh, also, well, it, it has look, the best opening scene. Oh, but but here's the irony. I mean, I, and I'm sure we'll come up with very many variations of this observation. This movie takes place in like the 1700s and 1972. And the most dated part is definitely the 1970. <laughs> In the best way possible, though. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, it's. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's got it's Carolyn mod. Monroe. It's mod. Mm -hmm. It's his. Stephanie Beecham. Oh man, this is a great movie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh my god, can't wait to do it. It is yeah. available on HBO Max and a couple other places. So check it out, and uh, we'll be back in a few weeks to do that one. Oh my gosh, Jeff, Chad, Bill. Mulligan, sir. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's always you. fun. Yeah. Yep. Even for a bad movie, it's that's this is what makes watching a bad movie worthwhile. Is I know I'm going to get to talk about it with you guys and get some laughs out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this one hour of entertainment makes the two hours of suffering through that through that clip <laughs> worthwhile. You, you suffer for the art. Uh, All right. Let's say goodnight.
Good night, night everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.